In this video of KL divergence, I'll be just showing you that the KL divergence, which is a distance metric, is positive. And that's all I'll be doing in this uh, this lecture. In the next lecture, I'll be uh, doing some examples of uh, what my probabilities P and Q are. Okay, let's start off with the definition. So the definition of KL divergence of P to Q is given by this Px times ln Px on Qx and where x, you have to integrate x over a certain domain. So x can be, I don't know, 0 to, uh, zero to uh, infinity, it can be uh, all real, um, it can be all rn. So it, it, it really depends on the problem, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It, um, it'll just take care of itself. Okay, um, I'm going to rewrite this KL divergence by by taking the ln as uh, as a negative log, so by switching those two, so this is the same as saying negative px ln qx on px dx. Okay, and oh, of course x is in, again in some sort of domain. Now, before I prove that it's positive, um, I want to show you the Jensen's inequality. So that, that's actually quite important uh, for, for me to show show you this proof. So uh, basically what's happening with the Jensen's inequality is that it says if we have a concave function or I, I think Jensen's inequality deals with convex functions but that, that's okay I'll just start with concave because it's slightly easier to see. Uh, An example of a concave function would be log x. Right? So if I take this point here to be x1, that point over here to be x2, right, and I'm going to subdivide it at some, some, as at some sort of point somewhere in between. It's not in the middle, somewhere. Okay, uh, so this y is equal to f of x. That point over there is f of x1. That point over there is f of x2. Okay, and this point over here, I'm going to I'm going to call that theta theta one times x one plus theta two times x two. Okay, and the and the theta one and theta two have to add up to one. Okay, just so that I make sure that's somewhere in between, and this this thing over here is going to be so that value over there is my function of theta one x one uh, plus theta two x two. Now, if you can see. This point over here is going to be well. I'll, I'll write that as coordinate theta one x one plus theta two x two, comma uh, theta one times f of x one plus theta two times f of x two. Right. So it's just because it's a straight line that I can just do this just by the division principle of the line. Okay. And this value over here is the same x coordinate, but the value is f theta theta one x one, f theta two x two. So it turns out that for any uh, concave function, uh, f theta one x one plus theta two x two is greater than uh, theta one f of x one plus theta two f of x two. Now that's for any concave function. One concave function example would be log. Okay, so ln of theta one x one plus theta two x two is going to be greater than theta one ln x one plus theta two ln x two. Okay, so what we have over here, one one way of thinking about this negative sign. In fact, I might just put the negative sign over here and remember this is multiplied. All right. Um, negative ln is simply going to be this thing switch around so if I put the negatives over here negative 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 this inequality would switch around right so because I'm multiplying the entire thing by a negative number so that's that's the first part that I that, that I need to show my proof and the second part is that this thing over here by induction I can show I can show that this ln is valid for sum of theta i x i is going to be less than sum of theta i ln 
uh, xi. So, oops, I forgot the negative sign. So, I'll take the negative sign up here and put the negative sign up here. And the only condition is that the sum of theta i has to sum, has to be equal to one, and that theta i has to be greater than zero. Okay, so we have these two conditions over here. And guess what? These these conditions they kind of look like a probability, right? So all all I'm saying is that my p i so uh, my p i has sum up to one, and my p i is greater than zero, which is always the case for probabilities. And now this is where we come back to the KL divergence. So let's 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 track back and look and focus our attention back on this thing over here. So I'll rewrite this and go. The KL divergence is equal to uh, it's equal to px times negative ln px on qx. And think of this part as one function. Sorry, that's qx. qx on px. Oh, my, my mistake. dx. So think of this as what we have over here. Okay, and, and compare it to what we have over here. So what we have is what we have is this xi is over here. This xi I can replace that with um, qx q of xi on p of xi. Okay, and then this thing over here I'm gonna replace with p of xi. Okay, so so that's what we have on this side of the thing. So basically what we're saying is that this this part is gonna be greater than the integral. Uh, oops, it's it's greater than the minus log of the integral of so remember my theta i was my px size, so in this case px times my xi, which was qx on px dx so my p my probabilities my actually the p probability will disappear because they cancel each other out and then i have the integral of qx and guess what qx is also a probability which means that it has to integrate out to one and what is ne negative log of one it's equal to zero so this is equal to zero negative log of one is going to be equal to zero so there you go the KL divergence is always going to be greater than uh, or equal to zero. Okay, so I suppose I should have said equal, 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 and so on. Um, and and that's it. And last comment that I have to make, uh, I suppose I should have made this right at the beginning, is that the KL divergence is actually it's not a symmetric distance metric, right? So it's over here. It's it's focusing more on the px, right? So it's it's showing the distance from qs to px, and you can well. The direction, the direction is a bit ambiguous as well, but uh, this is not the same as KLQ on P. These two are not equal. Okay, um, so that's it for the positivity proof. In my next video, I'll be going through some examples, so looking at uh, maybe Gaussians just to compare them and show you what it looks like. Um, and as far as this video goes, that's it. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And thanks for watching.